as you know, I recently became the Chief of Staff to the San Francisco District Attorney's Office, to San Francisco District Attorney Chesa Boudin. Uh, thank you all for being here today. Uh, we are here because we have a very important and historic announcement that our District Attorney will be making. And just to give you a brief overview of the run of show, we're going to hear from our District Attorney and then we're going to turn it over to uh, our Deputy Chief of Staff, Alex Baskin, and then Rachel Marshall, who is the uh, Director of Communications, who will facilitate a question and answer period. Just so you know, we are streaming live on Facebook, on Facebook Live, so there are people watching this event. And because it's being streamed on Facebook Live, we may need to have the questions repeated so that they can hear it when the question is asked. And then lastly, we want to invite members of the public of the press who want to uh, interview uh, the district attorney or other staff to please ask Rachel or Alex. And we especially encourage uh, monolingual media, Spanish language media, Chinese language media, if they want to speak to uh, the district attorney or someone in the office, we're happy to do that. So with that, let me turn it over to San Francisco's district attorney, Chesa Houdin. Thank you, David, and thank you all for being here today. As recent events have reminded us, for far too long, we have seen the failure of our legal system to hold police accountable for violence committed against the very members of the public that they have sworn to serve and protect. This lack of accountability for police who abuse their power has created great mistrust in our communities, especially among people of color. When I ran for district attorney, I promised that I would evaluate each and every case, and when the evidence supported it, that I would hold police officers accountable under the law. In San Francisco, there has been a long history of officer-involved shootings leading to no accountability whatsoever, further cementing the idea that police are above the law. That stops today. I'm here to announce that earlier this morning, my office has filed homicide charges against former San Francisco Police Department officer Chris Samayoa for his December 2017 killing of Keita O'Neill. As far as we are aware, this is the first ever time that the San Francisco District Attorney's Office has filed homicide charges against a law enforcement officer for a homicide while on duty. After a careful review of all of the evidence and the law, this morning we filed the following charges. Voluntary manslaughter, involuntary manslaughter, assault by an executive officer, assault with a semi-automatic firearm, and negligent discharge of a firearm. Now I want to talk briefly about the facts of the case, which some of you may be familiar with. In December of 2017, Keita O'Neill was a 42-year-old African-American man who was shot and killed by the San Francisco Police Department. On that day, police were dispatched to a report of a minivan that was being driven by a suspect in a carjacking. Officer Samoyoa was a passenger in the lead police vehicle pursuing the minivan. The minivan traveled through the streets of the Bayview District, and after a pursuit of several blocks, the van reached a dead end, where Mr. O'Neill jumped out of the vehicle and began to run on foot. As Mr. O'Neill ran past the police officer, uh, the police car, excuse me, in which Officer Samayoa was sitting in the passenger seat, Officer Samayoa fired his service weapon through 
the glass window of his door. The bullet struck and fatally injured Mr. O'Neill. Mr. O'Neill had no weapon. He was unarmed. Body camera footage from other officers showed that not a single other officer pulled out their service weapon or pointed it at Mr. O'Neill. As a result of Officer Samayoa's terrible, tragic, and unlawful decision to pull and shoot his gun that day, Mr. O'Neill was killed, and my office is filing homicide charges today. I realize that this is an emotional moment for many, particularly in Mr. O'Neill's family and in the broader community in the Bayview that have been impacted by this crime and others. I had the opportunity to speak briefly this morning with Mr. O'Neill's family, and they conveyed their appreciation for this historic decision, and it gives them hope that justice may finally be served, that the killing of their son and nephew and cherished member of their family will finally be treated as the crime that it was on the day that it occurred. We have also notified Mayor London Breed, Chief of Police Scott, City Attorney Dennis Herrera, Supervisor Shimon Walton, whose district this crime occurred in, and many other city leaders. We've also notified former Officer Samayoa's attorneys, who we expect will be providing him with legal defense in the case. Now, I want to emphasize that this case is at the very earliest stages. We only filed the charges and the arrest warrant earlier this morning here at the Hall of Justice. We expect that former officer Samayoa will surrender on those charges later this week. We do not expect him to be a flight risk. He has been at liberty the last three years while this case was under investigation. And we are therefore not seeking his detention pre-trial. We will provide all of you and the public with further updates as they become available. Now, in closing and before we take questions, I will note something that I believe all of us know. 2020 has been a difficult year for everyone. It has brought unforeseen and unpredictable challenges to every single one of us. It has also highlighted some of the very grave injustices that remain in our country, particularly around police use of force and the lack of accountability therefore. Today, I am proud that San Francisco is charting a new course, one that will hold officers accountable when they break the law and value the lives hurt by unwarranted police use of force, a course that will enforce the laws equally. Thank you.